So the algorithm says I haven't been posting videos. And I haven't. And even though everybody just hates being told by the algorithm what to do, there might be one or two people who are interested in what sort of projects I have been working on recently. And so, sure, why not? Um, an update on what I've been up to. I have been playing with um, making a mount, motorizing a mount for a telescope. And then I got off somebody on Craigslist for basically a song. 110 millimeter um, refractor. In any event, it occurred to me that I would like to play with the um, idea of adding uh, motors to an alt as mount. So altitude um, and azimuth. Whoops, that's a wrong guy. And azimuth. So this guy mounts on here. The optical, oops, the optical tube mounts on here so that it can it can move. And did I provide enough clearance on this? Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, no, I'm going to have... So, basically making mistakes is what I've been up to. But what else is new? Let's see. All of the problems that I have on this thing. Let's see, what did I, what did I miss? On here, I had to drill out these lets for the heads of these screws because I did not measure the screw head. I just took the defaults in FreeCAD for their counterbore and given an M3 screw, and that was a mistake. I should definitely have done um, some more uh, some more measuring and set out to make these um, these lets more um, uh, fit better. Because I mean, I did that for here, which doesn't work so bad. Designed a nice uh, little gear in in FreeCAD. Um, for the stepper motor, and these are just, you know, NEMA 17 stepper motors. I haven't redesigned the, uh, the motor mount part. I just took this same part. Oh, uh, whoops. What am I doing? I'm going to slide that in there. But obviously I have to trim this off. Um, I could redesign the part, two parts out of this part, by having a piece that I trim out of here. Right now this is a cut out of um, a rectangular piece in FreeCAD. Um, but it would just make it nice to line that um, up so that it can actually, first of all, travel all the way in to get the travel that I, I might need in order to um, mount the motor and actually being able to tighten the belt on it. So yeah, so basically it's the same design on both sides. You have a, um, a dovetailed uh, motor mount that slides into a... Um, motor mounting arm and then you have a screw here that pushes against and I'll put in a metal glue of metal plate onto there or you know double-sided sticky tape a little metal plate to avoid the uh, um, to give it a bit of longevity and you can use that to pull this part out um, and t tension the belt and then there's a little clamp here that will clamp the uh, the belt down. And since this is under tension, all of the th this plate will tend to tip this way, so it will tend to um, stay nice and, and tensioned. In order to get um, gearing on the azimuth ax, or the altitude axis, I needed to design a gear for, uh, that would sit um, in the gap between the body of the mount and the rotating element. So uh, that basically determined the maximum size that I could make the gear because this thing is on a cant or on a on a curve and there's no um, straight path uh, once you get past here, so I had to either, you know, mount the motor down here, which I think I might um, change. If if I reprint this, I'm going to mount the motor closer to this angle. Whoops. Closer to this angle rather than up here, just because it feels like it's a little count cantilevered out here, and it bringing the mass down here would bring the center of gravity lower, which I am I think would be better. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of rotating uh, the arm part 
or rotating the the let, which is oval here. It's an oval. Rotating that let piece around so that this can drop down. And because this is going to be the line, I can I can probably bring it down almost 45 degrees. 40 degrees. And then that would bring this mass down to here, which would be which would make it much less unbalanced. And it would reduce the stress that would be actually placed on this thing. And this is the um, the azimuth um, bearing. So originally the telescope had this as an azimuth bearing, where it was, uh, this was the tripod mount here. So you had this going here. So I just redesigned this base here. That's that piece there, and then mounted a, a gear on it using the FreeCAD gear workbench. And they have a GT uh, gear tooth profile that you can use that is, uh, gives, you know, you give it the, you, know, you can actually modify it for different tooth patterns, but um, you tell it what tooth pattern, and then you tell it the width of the belt, and then you tell it the number of teeth, and it'll design this uh, and give you a shape. And then finally, I needed to mount it to a tripod. So I had um, a quick release on a Manfrotto um, head and catted this up so that it fits into the uh, tripod mount. That's this thing. If you um, this rotates and clamps things in, it and there we go. So now we have a quick releasable telescope mount on top of a tripod. Next steps is to modify, well, I'm going to, just for testing purposes, I'm going to modify this by just cutting it off, just so I can make sure, make sure that it works, and then I guess I have to also um, make some modifications here so that it doesn't bump into the edges of this. So on this heat set insert, I'm putting it in from this side because the it's going to be under tension, and so that will, again, meet up against a there's a, um, a shoulder inside of this hole, and that's clearance for, um, for, the bolt, for the mounting bolt. So I just pop this guy in here. Get the right one, yes. There. I like the clearances on that one better. That one looks like it actually might withstand some rotational force. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's heat set inserts. And then it's just mounting the motor into here. And we've got adjustability. The size of this gear is somewhat determined by the bearing surface that was under here. And I didn't have much room to extend beyond because there would be fasteners. I mean, I could have made this a bit bigger, but um, and, I, and I might if I need to do any modifications to it. But um, in any event, there is, some, there is some fixed maximum size and a fixed minimum size of the gear. Um, well, not exactly. I mean, I could probably have created a bearing let and then have a smaller gear sitting on top of that bearing let, but um, I wanted to uh, maximize the size of this gear just to reduce the gear ratio so that I could have more accuracy because the number of steps on here is going to be divided by the gear ratio in terms of how much pointing accuracy you can get. Now, this plate is flexible. I mean... I could probably 
do some uh, some strengthening by putting up an aluminum plate on this side and bolting parts to it, or which uh, I might end up doing if the belt tension doesn't allow doesn't um, give me enough backlash prevention. Let's unplug this before I burn myself. Or I could make this thicker so that it withstands more um, bending moment. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, it's certainly fine enough for testing, I think, right now. But it will give me, if I do try and machine something out of aluminum, it might give me a, uh, a chance to test my path workbench knowledge out on FreeCAD. So maybe, maybe I'll do it. And again, we've got tension this way, so the bending moments here, this clamp here prevents this side from lifting up very much. We've got bearing surfaces on this side, so this part will tend to torque this way. I think we I think we've got it. And anyways, now we have a motor connected to both axes. And so at the very worst, we've got a prototype of a motorized alt azimuth telescope mount that we can begin experiments with. And uh, yeah, then it'll be assembled and I can um, move on to figuring out some wiring harnessing and where I'm going to mount a controller board and uh, then start coding. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Talk to you later.